The nest. Look at that. Look at that. Are you kidding me? A couple right there. Good morning, nature. All right, so that's that's theme number two. This is basically this is all the boards that we got trying to cut those beams out. The story of taking a tree and turning it into lumber and making a house from it has been told since the beginning of mankind. We have been sheltering ourselves forever and we've been using trees to do it. This is my version of this story. This is an important morning. At 9 o'clock I'm going to go over to my buddy's house and he's going to show me how to use a wood mill. Um, Yeah, it's not an Alaskan sawmill because it's not a chainsaw. It has a, I believe it's a 60 inch blade is what I think the blade on it is, but I'll ask. Um, my problem right now is I have about a half a mile journey to get back to the marina. So it's 8.30, I'm gonna start leaving now. Um, the fog's not getting any better. I'm gonna have to go by GPS, so this will be interesting. I'm trying to remember where all the logs are to avoid them because they are just under the water, that's for sure. Look into the distance, there's a house up on the hill, guiding like a lighthouse. It's a place where you'll be safe to feel our grace. We've all made mistakes. If you've lost your way, well, I will leave the light on. Well, I will leave the light on. No, no, no. Well, I will leave the light on Well, I will leave the light on No, no, no Because if you look into the distance There's a house upon the hill Garden like a lighthouse It's a place where you'll be safe to feel like grace If you've lost your way If you've lost your way I know you're down and out now, but I need you to be brave. Hiding from the truth, they ain't gonna make this all okay. I see your pain. If you don't feel our grace, and you've lost your way. Well, I will leave the light on. Well, I will leave the light on. Well, I will leave the light on. There's this little gap right here where you can't see the island you're going to and you lose the island behind you so you don't know if you're really running parallel to the shore or not and there's a danger of not only running aground but just running out into the river and that's a little, it frustrates me, I don't really like it. If I, every time I, I'm doing these type of videos I'm telling you guys if it's, if I don't have somewhere to go I'm, I wouldn't be out doing this, you know, I actually have some place to go. Today. Never mentions the word addiction in certain company. Yes, to tell you she's an orphan after you meet her family. 
I need a new battery, I guess. I let the truck sit here a lot without running for weeks on end, and it's batteries. Not happy. Oh, we're off. Head over to Jamie's and turn trees into boards. This is the coolest thing I've done in forever. So when you think you have a long driveway, remember I had to use a time lapse at 10 frames per minute to get up here to even show it to you. Yeah, she's so beautiful. I miss my Doberman. I miss my Doberman almost every day. Every day. No key. No key. A lot of people would look in here and see things that they would use. However, because of how thick they are and how thick the bark is, the wood's already started to rot. Or if it's not rotted, it will. It, there's nothing you can do to make it not rot. And like a board like this, you would put more chemicals and more nutrients or whatever into it to make it stay solid than the board cost. So it's just not worth it. Come here, River. Come here, right with me. We're in the way. He's got to get some logs. Okay, so there's two types of exca excavators, one with a thumb and one without a thumb. The thumb right there makes that a hole, it makes that, the thumb is basically the thing he's gripping on with the log right there. That is what makes an excavator operate at a whole nother level. Um, otherwise, he would have had to grab that log, push it all the way against that front blade, and then try to ring it up. And he would have had to center the log too. Um, but since he can grab it like that, it, I mean, it sets it apart. It's a whole nother level. But when you buy a machine, they can all have it added. I love the sound of chainsaws. like a 10 by 10 block. You don't can't buy wood in those dimensions at a store. <laughs> One of the reasons you see people in tracked machines backing up is because if you do a 180 in a track machine on solid ground, you'll take the tracks off after a while. So you need to be real subtle about how you turn them. White oak. We're getting uh, five 10 foot beams and then one, I think a 25 or 20 foot beam. So that's what we're cutting for Jamie. Essentially, these logs inside of them have eight by eight beams. However, there's a lot of boards and one inch boards that you can cut off of them on either on all four sides. Typically, Jamie, in this situation, would toss those boards. In this situation, I'm going to keep them. Okay, so the thin side goes towards the saw. Which makes sense, because if you're at the big side, you just cut it and you wouldn't make it all the way through. And then, these are called dogs? Mm -hmm. That, the, Okay. Do you ever run into those with the saw? I haven't until you published it today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now she's secure. And then do you do that one or no? Yeah, no, you're going to do that one. Okay. So the other trick is you got to always try to make sure that the, that log has got to be touching this other side over here. There you go. 
And the angle I'm going down is just the height that I'm trying to pick right here with the lock. Yeah, right? you can go a little bit longer down. Yep, about right in there. Well, maybe a little bit more down. It's good. Okay. So go ahead and start sliding your other bottom as close to the log as you can. Yep, and uh, you ain't, no, don't worry about that little hook. You gotta, you gotta take your bottom in a little bit more. Yep. Okay. And now uh, open your lever up to you as you're doing that. There you go. Now, now it should clamp down nice. Oh, I see it now. I feel, feel it. Okay. okay. So whenever what we, that does is just to get it out of the lock. They help take it off. Right. All right. Absolutely. Never touch this again. It's just the bottom. Where it's, it's making, it's not slick. It's actually worse. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is cool. All right. I hate to cut in and explain what Jamie is explaining to me, but this is the only way to get the motor out of the deal. Essentially, there is a water line that's coming from that bucket and drips on the saw blade right before it goes into the wood. And what he's saying is it adjusts to the thickness of the log. And you want that to be about six inches from the log because it stabilizes the blade at exactly the straight height from across and moistens it. All right. I mean, this is him showing me the first cut uh, log that you're cutting sides on. is called a cant and you the things flipping it over is called a cant roller. Essentially, we just cut enough off to start a square, an 8 inch square on the top. And then on the second rotation, we cut enough off to do it, have an 8 inch top. The last two rotations, we are cutting it down to make it 8 actual inches. And that's when we find out how many boards we're going to take off. Now let's go back to learning right from Jamie. Is that a chainsaw sharpener? Yep, they call it a rat tail file. A rat tail file? Yep. He's following those lines. See that line? Now on the first log we cut, once we cut it square into a cant, we found out that it wasn't eight inches, so I just cut it into seven boards. Okay, so this is what I got out of that one log. My phone, it's a hot day, so my phone won't do long time lasts. But essentially this is one inch boards by seven inch wide, ten and a half long, and it's white oak. So I think I'm gonna use these to do uh, the privacy wall <laughs> along the patio. So these yeah. logs have been dried for years, but they're still wet when you cut them. So you gotta put the boards out. If you don't want shrinkage, you know, let the, the boards dry still. So, so what I'm doing now is just putting little gaps in them to let the air get to them. Okay, so the way you have, you gotta put the thin part of the log towards the saw. Uh, that way you'll know what you're actually getting when you cut as far as like how how many inches the beam's gonna be which is why he's going all the way around to the other side and then those are called dogs oh and he's also cleaning the material out that's one thing a lot of people don't realize excavators can do. There's a plow in the front of an excavator. It's not a big one, but it's a plow.
you're about to take another inch off. A couple of things I want you to see. Number one, look at this wood. Look at this board. Whoa, can you believe that's inside of the tree? That's so amazing. Number two, Jamie is basically he's going to switch it out to where he is going to make me learn how to do this today. So by the time I'm done with the day, I will have cut my own beam from start to finish and been able to grab whatever boards I think are off of the log before the beam is cut. And that's my day. Hey. One of the best parts about editing is getting to review the day. Like, I'm learning more now re-watching this. I should have handed my cant to Jamie and picked them both up, but I was so overwhelmed that I wasn't thinking about being nice or whatever. <laughs> I'm just trying to get through the day, trying to figure it all out. Essentially, when you're... One thing I don't think subscribers or people who comment understand is that if you're the person in the video and you're editing, if I leave it in there, I realize I made the mistake. I've already seen it and I put it in there so you can see it and witness what real time feels like in that situation. Currently in this video, I'm sure you guys are thinking the saw, the saw is loud. All I'm hearing is, eh, 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 eh. well, that was my day, the whole Sunday. And because Jamie and I are just crazy men, we didn't wear ear hearing stuff or anything. <laughs> A lot is going on in my mind here. I'm trying to take in all the information because I want to be able to use this machine without bothering Jamie to help me, right? The other thing is I don't want to cut a log. Part of me, basically, I don't want to cut a log to one inch too short and then all of a sudden the beam is seven inches when you flip it over and cut the next bark off. So I had a little worry with that to begin with. But once we got into three logs, the fourth and the fifth, I've started to just do without asking because I felt comfortable that I had five inches or three inches on the other side to play with. At that point, J Jamie really just kind of let me go. He just, you know, he was standing there and he would definitely answer any question that I had. And you've seen how he explains things extremely well, but he let me just do it. And I felt by the end of the day, I felt like I could walk up to this machine, put a log on here and take off the boards that I want from this experience and i i gotta tell you it's a i'm at a new level of confidence when it comes to making a house when you can walk into a forest look at the tree figure out oh this tree is too thick at the bottom and too thin at the top so it won't make i'll have to throw away too much wood i need a more symmetrical tree from top to bottom for eight and a half feet all of this stuff is coming together in my mind and you have seen me cut down trees you've seen me drag logs up my creek from my creek all the way up to the top of the cliff you see me measure and cut the logs and use them at the right length and move them at this point now i can just start making wood from them it's a beautiful beautiful thing happening in my mind right now simple as my mama said when i was very young she told me not to worry, son, one day you'll be someone. But here I am at 21, as loaded as a stagecoach shotgun. I'm sorry, mama, please don't look at me. I want to talk about some carpentry things that I've learned over the years. There are two tools, a planer and a joiner. Those two tools are specifically made that when you go to the hardware store and you buy a piece of wood, wood is not straight from the hardware store. A planer will make it flat on the top and flat on the bottom, so the top and the bottom are parallel to each other. A joiner will take that flat plane along its side and make a 90 degree cut along the bottom of it. Once we get two sides that are 90 degree the log tips on its side and it's on a level plane which means we no longer need to have the dog ears up to hold it in place it's not round anymore and we're cutting a level surface on top and bottom
Yeah, when I got to Oklahoma, I was 17. My papa taught me how to work, and Lord, he was me. Working all day in that August heat, and he taught me how to fish. My uncle taught me how to drink. Well, I went to California and I had me a band And we played in all the bars and all the southern lands we Played all night and we drank for free All of my boys and me She's a good girl Girls and mama Love Jesus And love me too She's a good girl So what's left on that board right now, on that on the mill, is an 8x8 beam. And that's what Jamie needs, is five 8x8 beams and then one, and they're all 10 feet long, 10 feet plus long. And then he's got to get a long one. I don't know if that's a 20 footer or 30 foot, I don't know, we'll figure that out. But we're taking all the boards, we're cutting away good boards, leaving his beams, and I'm taking the boards. A lot of lumberjacks would just cut the beams out and burn the rest. Absolutely one of the coolest things I've done in a very long time. I feel like I'm 10 years old and I'm excited like I'm a little kid. It's awesome. And in the background, we're burning a lot. These are all going to turn into beams. And then there's a really long log in there we got to pick out to make beams. All right, so that's, that's beam number two. Okay, and out of, out of the logs that we grab, all right, so this is the cutoff bark, which honestly, someone could probably do something with this stuff, but it's bark, so it rots right away. And then this is the wood that we got. This is, basically, this is all the boards that we got trying to cut those beams out. So, basically, we're going in one inch, everything's one inch here. So we're going to one inch, and cutting down until we get to where the 8 inch, the log is wide enough to make an 8 inch beam. Then on the last beam, when we get it all the way down, we're going to cut 1 inch boards off of it, This, which is this, where it's clean cut on one side, and we cut that down until the board is all the way down to 8 inches. So they're 8 inch by 8 inch beams. I wish we had some kind of uh, weight, like a scale to tell you how much they weigh. They're just so heavy. I can't even explain it. And then do you use them natural or do you like, do you sand them or do anything to them? It's like just a real rough, uh, just a small sand on them. Okay. Just to make it so it doesn't splinter or hurt you. Okay. And then you, do you treat them? Uh, we'll let them dry out and then we put a uh, natural timber oil. Oh, oil on them, okay. All okay. right. So they would spin this to make varnish, like var uh, veneer, right? Okay. So this is log number three. We're three fifths of the way done with the beams and Look at how much wood I got here. It, when you stack it, it doesn't look like much, but I gotta tell you, these are, the minimum is seven inches wide, and they're all one inch. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven deep. Seven times four, <laughs> 28 boards. And we got two more logs to do, and then we got some long logs to do too.
That is a good day's work right there. That is a good day's work right there. See that little line right there? That's how you know where to do it. Three strokes forward. Look at all the debris in the water from because the water's so high. Oh look, there's people like camped out. Or they pulled up to shore and they're fishing from shore. River, get off the front of the boat. Get off the front of the boat. Stay down. Now we'll see. Not only if the boat's still here, yep, the boat's still here. And now let's check and see what cricket's been up to out there. Everything looks normal. 